here is a strip of paper, which I bend into an S shape, like so. And with the help of those two paper clips, I fix the shape here and here. This is what it looks like. What happens if I start pulling the ends of the paper? Well, you can see that the paper clips come closer and closer together because they are being driven by the paper, so to speak. So eventually, they'll touch each other and jam. But if I keep pulling, they hop, and they're linked with each other. That's very nice. This is the prototype or version zero of the magic tricks that I shall show. And this prototype is not mine. It's, in fact, classically known. In America, for example, Martin Gardner's Encyclopedia of um, Impromptu Magic refers to it, this thing. And I also found a Japanese reference to it from the 1960s. But we shall now start doing variations. And those variants will be quite interesting. Let's repeat the same experiment, the same preparation as before, but this time with the addition of a rubber band. You see, this paper has two loops here and here, left and right from your point of view, <coughs> and this rubber band is hanging on the left loop. I'm being a little picky because in a moment I'll let it hang from the right loop and call it version number two, but this is version number one hanging from the left on your side. This time, what happens is this. Very nice. You get this sort of half chain of rubber band, clip, clip, all hanging together, and the entire thing on the paper, hanging from the paper, staying on the paper. That's version number one. Well, I need not tell you, because you're all great experts in science, that in science, you often have to ex exercise observation. You cannot dismiss as irrelevant small differences of innocuous appearance. Let's see another configuration, which looks very much like version number one, but isn't. You remember that this was version number one that we have just tried. The rubber band is hanging from the left loop. Now, <coughs> The rubber band is hanging from the right loop, and that's what we shall call version number two. Huh? It used to be here, now it's hanging over here. Well, if you're not observant, you might say, what's the difference? It doesn't look very different. But you remember what happened to version number one. It, left, it was left hanging from the paper with two pa paper clips hanging underneath it. This time, the whole thing falls off the paper. Nonetheless, this half chain of clip, clip rubber band is still there. That's quite curious. Having seen version number one, which stays on the paper, and version number two that falls off the paper, it becomes irresistible to do them at the same time, superpose them. What is one plus two? Before we do that, however, I'd like to debunk myself a little bit. The fact that paper clips come together in version zero, that's, and elsewhere, that's quite interesting, in fact. There's a lot to be studied, and we shall come back to that. So the action of the paper clips is interesting, but the fact that in version number one, the rubber band stayed on the paper, and version number two, it fell off the paper, is in fact no mystery. So let's see why that is so. Forget about the paper clips and look just at the rubber band. This is what version number one looked like. And you see how the paper is positioned with respect to the rubber band. The paper strip goes into the rubber band, but then goes on the side so that it is linked with the paper. So when I pull the strip, he has no choice but to stay on the paper. In contrast, version number two looked like this. And you can see how the paper is positioned with respect to the rubber, rubber band. Paper strip goes into the rubber band, but comes back out. So when I pull, the rubber band is not linked to the paper, it can fall down. So version number one stays on the paper, number two falls off the paper. That is not mysterious, but as I say, the action of the paper clips is far more interesting. Let's go back to one plus two. What is one plus two? Well, you'll agree that one plus two should look like this. That's one plus two. Indeed, if we had only this rubber band, it's version number one. 
And this by itself would be version number two. So what's going to happen? Let's revise quickly. Version number one produced rubber band hanging from the paper with a clip clip underneath. Version number two, clip clip rubber band, but everything fell down. So anyway, what's going to happen is this. That's very nice. And in retrospect, did you guess that? I didn't. Um, in retrospect, it makes sense. Because if we didn't have this, that's just the result of the version number one. If we didn't have this, then we would have paper, uh, clip clip rubber band, but detached from the paper. So it's going to be version number two. And this is what we might call a linear superposition of version number one plus version number two. That's very nice. So we got this long chain this time of rubber band, clip, clip, rubber band, all chained up together. And it had to be like this because one of the rubber bands was in the version number one position linked to the paper, and the other one unlinked to the paper. That was now version number two. So that's what happened. Well, we must try then what happens to one plus one. I think we can all guess what's going to happen. Version number one let's remember, is the one that stayed on the paper, linked to the paper. So the configuration looks like this. That's what we shall call version number one plus version number one. This by itself is hanging on the left loop in front of you, and that's version number one, as you recall. And as you can see from the back, this is another copy of version number one. And you can see, looking closely, that both of these rubber bands are linked to the paper. So they have no choice but to stay on the paper when I pull on the ends. The question is, what's going to happen to them and the paper clips together? Well, let's try. They must both stay on the paper. So what's going to happen is, yes, as you all guessed, and that's what happens, we get a sort of suspension bridge like this. We must. And it's very gratifying that we think nature should do one thing, and nature obliges. Um, we again obtain this long chain of band, clip, clip, band. But this time, both bands had to be linked to the paper. So this was the only possible configuration. It remains for us, then, to try 2 plus 2. What is 2 plus 2? Well, version number 2 was the one that fell off the paper, you remember, because the rubber band was unlinked with the paper. So what's going to happen? Well, I can already guess what's going to happen. Let's prepare 2 plus 2. This configuration was 1 plus 1. And 2 plus 2 is simply this. Let's see. If you ignored this rubber band and looked at only this one, you can see that it is a copy of version number 2 that we saw earlier. Paper goes in but comes back out. So this is unlinked to the paper. And similarly, symmetrically from the back, that's another copy of version number 2. So let's see what's going to happen. Well, I think I know what's going to happen. Let's see. Nothing up here. Nothing up here. This time, I thought we would get a long chain, as we always obtain, of band, clip, clip, band, falling down, because nothing is linked to the paper. But in fact, this doesn't fall off the paper. And the way it does not fall off the paper is quite remarkable. So I'd like to show you how it's stuck on the paper by positioning the rubber bands in this manner. You see? If we didn't have this rubber band, please ignore the paper clips, they're not interesting. If the, we didn't have this rubber band, then we would be able to pull off this rubber band. On the other hand, if we didn't have this rubber band preventing it, this middle rubber band would be able to fall down. So neither of the two rubber bands by itself is staying on the paper, but together they're stuck on the paper. So if we think of the paper as the last loop, here, we obtain a collection of three loops that are pairwise unlinked, but together they are stuck. And that kind of configuration is traditionally called in mathematics a Borromean link, because 
of the Italian Renaissance family called Borromeo. That's not the one that used to poison everyone um, in the family. Another family, Borromeo, whose coat of arms depicted something like this. So here is one example of the Borromean link that I made thanks to the paper clips, giant paper clips supplied by my friend Tom Rofka. Um, you see those three paper clips, do you see that? Are so positioned that no two of them are linked, but they're stuck together. Indeed, for example, if I, in my imagination, erase the clip that I'm holding, you can see that the other two clips, this one and this one, can be pulled apart. They are not linked. And similarly, if I get rid of the one that now I'm holding, this one and this one can be pulled apart. And in fact, it's completely symmetric, like so. So no two of them are pairwise linked, but together they are linked. Borromean link. And if I put, hold this like this, I think they are exactly in the same position. Let's see, like that. Yeah. The paper that I'm holding corresponds to the clip that I'm holding here. And there is a crossover rubber band, which is, excuse me, you should behave, um, this one. And then finally, there's a kind of lock in the middle, which is this uh, vertical thing hanging. So they are exactly in the same position. So Borromean links are very interesting. They are pairwise unlinked. And using that, we can do some interesting piece of magic. Those two loops, paper loops. I'm going to hold them like this. Well, we have the clear impression that this red loop is, of course, completely unrelated to my um, finger loop because they are far, uh, far away from each other in space, so they are unlinked. On the other hand, clearly, blue is linked with my finger loop. So my finger and fingers and blue are linked, whereas red and my fingers are not linked. Linked, unlinked, that's a topological, as we say, condition. So we cannot change that however much we try, as long as we don't rupture anything and we stay continuous. But now I grab this strand and pull. And they exchange positions. <laughs> That's strange. Now, blue is unlinked, which was previously linked with my fingers, whereas red, which used to be linked with my fingers, uh, which used to be unlinked from my fingers, is now linked. And in order to see it better, I pull this string again, and then it, you can keep repeating. It's a very good and pleasant time to spend the afternoon um, going back and going back. So this is, in fact, a Borromean link in that no two of those links, despite what I was saying, are linked pairwise. Indeed, it's clear in this configuration, blue and my fingers are unlinked. But look, red and my fingers are also unlinked because you can see this. If I get rid of erase in my imagination the blue, I would be able to pull the red away from my, my fingers. I cannot only because blue is preventing me. And similarly, red and blue are unlinked pairwise. They are linked only because my fingers are preventing them. Indeed, if I release my fingers, they can be pulled apart. That's how I created them in the beginning. So this is some sort of um, symmetry of the Borromean link, which I haven't quite figured out. Let's go back then. If you try this trick to your f on your family and friends, I suggest that you end with the following nasty surprise. So let's revise the simplest version zero that we started from. OK, what happens if I bend the paper in an S shape and put two paper clips to fix the shape and pull the ends? You all know what happens. And they say, yes, yes, we know what happens. The paper clips come together. And I pull, and they didn't. What happened? Hey, okay. Usually distracted by your eloquence, they are not watching what they are doing, and let that be a lesson to all of them. In fact, what you did was to put the paper clip here, and not here, but on the other side. So they have no reason to come together. For that matter, I'm not entirely sure that they have any reason to come together if you put them on the same side, but that's another story. So they don't come together. But not all is lost. This might look boring, 
But now you can try with rubber bands the configuration where the paper clips don't come together. So let's try one or two configurations. And you can try all the rest at home. How about this, for example? This is the configuration that we used to call one plus one because there's rubber band, one rubber band which is in position number one linked to the paper and another copy of version number one as you can see from, this, from the back, linked with the paper as well. But this time, unlike in the previous experiment, the paper clips are on opposite sides of the paper, so they will not come together. So what's going to happen? That's quite interesting. Before we do that, I think there is one issue that we have to settle in order to advance. You know, we were saying that if we do version number one, you remember? This feels like a long time ago. The rubber band stays on the paper with two paper clips hanging from the rubber band. But which of these two paper clips hangs from the rubber band and which hangs from the other paper clip? We don't quite know that. So <coughs> let's see if by removing this, you get the rubber band with a paper clip hanging from it. No, you don't. Maybe you shouldn't. Now, how about this? I have removed this paper clip and left this one. And if I do that, ah, so now we have figured out something extra that when we tried version number one all by itself, there were two paper clips, but it's actually this paper clip that gets connected with the rubber band, and the other one gets connected with the other paper clip. OK, so now let's go back to what we were doing. This is version 1 plus version 1, except that the paper clips are on the wrong size here. Now, let's think. Well, there is no more paper clip here, but there is a paper clip here. So this paper clip is going to be connected with this one, presumably. And are you with me that if I pull, put everything upside down, this rubber band will be connected to this paper clip? In fact, upside down, well, it's nice to live in a gravitational field. Um, that's what allows us to do lots of things. But in this case, gravity has nothing to do with the topology of the phenomenon. So this will be connected with that. And this paper clip will be connected with that. But the two paper clips themselves will not come together. So what's going to happen? Yes, you guessed. I think the same way too. So you see, we understand, begin to understand lots and lots of things about this. A few open problems or half-open problems. We have been so far adding paper clips, you agree. I thought it would be nice to be able to subtract. In mathematical terms, we don't have any more monoids, but we would like to have groups. We can subtract as well as add. So here, I have brought two paper clips that are already linked. And in a nutshell, I'd like to pull them apart, separate them. How do I do that? In this case, I have found from experience that the orientation, which did not matter so far, starts mattering. This was suggested and was uh, first uh, successfully attempted by a friend of mine called Andrew Thompson. So what I'm going to do, being very careful about the orientation, is to put the paper clips like so. So I bent the paper in an S shape like before, and I made those two linked paper clips straddle over the two loops like this. Okay. Now, this experiment is quite uh, fresh, so I don't quite understand what's going on. So I sometimes get it wrong. So let's see what happens. Is this paper made of uh, table made of wood? Okay. So when I pull, what's going to happen is they came apart. I can now subtract. That's very nice. Not only add, but subtract. So if my career as a mathematician doesn't work out, maybe I can start a factory linking and unlinking paper clips together. OK. Well, having done addition and subtraction, it would be nice to be able to do multiplication. Multiplication, actually, is not so difficult. This is what I think multiplication should be. And you already agree. Earlier, we had one paper clip here and one paper clip here. Now I have two here and one here. Again, this experiment doesn't always work, so please bear with me. Uh, I haven't quite stabilized all those experiments. You see, when I 
explore and discover new things, I practice and try to make it robust before I show it to the public. But now I'm showing something that I shouldn't probably be showing yet. Anyway, so I do this. What's going to happen? Well, I think this is what's going to happen. You see, each of these two parallel paper clips will be linked with this one. Because you know, it doesn't know that the, its partner, parallel partner is there. So they'll be linked. But those two parallel ones have no business linking with each other. What's going to happen is they hop, and I hope this is what happened. You see, those were the parallel paper clips, and that was the isolated one on the other side. So this got crossed with each of the other two, so that's two times one. Similarly, I don't seem to have brought enough paper clips here. <laughs> that's, you see, that's what happens when you don't have enough funding in mathematics. That I, don't, I run out of paper clips. Anyway, um, so you can have three paper clips on one side and two on the other side. And what's going to happen is something like this, three times two. So it's a very straightforward pattern, except that it gets going to get really messed up. So I recommend that you use a long and soft paper clip and, uh, and a lot of paper also. So not only do we have a group, we also have a ring structure. Finally, I very um, casually said, well, we have a group structure. Well, in layman's terms, that includes me, can I link together three paper clips like this in a row? We've been linking two. How about three in a row? Well, an idea suggests itself, doesn't it? We have been having an S shape with two bends. What about? sort of an omega shape <laughs> with three bends like this. So when I pull, what's going to happen? OK, is this? OK, maybe I'll, unfortunately, it didn't quite do what I wanted to do. But in fact, this is what happened. When we did this, well, pure mathematically, as it were, we should have obtained a sequence of three. But now we're leaving pure mathematics and entering physics. It turns out that when I did this, there developed an enormous concentration of stress on the middle clip, which distorted its shape. As you can see, there are many interesting open problems, and of course more that I have not shown and shared with you today. I hope that you pursue those things, regardless of whether it's called mathematics, physics, or magic. They all blend into each other. It's all part of nature, and I hope you have a good time.